Have you ever been training with a really large person and they do this to you? Or this? Then today's video is for you. So today's question is from Steven, and Steven says he is a beanpole. I didn't say that, he said that. He said he's a beanpole and he's having trouble with top position against bigger people, right? He says that he's in side control, he's getting chucked off from uh, the side. He says that when he's trying to hold him out, he tries to hold him out and they just push him out of the, the position. And uh, he says that he's just, in overall, just having trouble holding top position. And so he sent me a message asking about what I would suggest maybe to uh, tighten up his position, add more top pressure, or how to hold top position as a smaller person. So uh, again, I'm not a small man by any stretch, but I'm not the largest. And so from my experience of rolling with the larger people and from my experience as a coach of over a decade and having smaller students and smaller training partners and watching how they move, I'm gonna give you a few tips to chew on here, Steven that'll hopefully be helpful to you uh, the next time you go to the gym and you're training up against these bigger, larger people. So with that said, let's jump into the video with my big student, Jack. All right, brother, so first off, I guarantee you as a smaller guy, and we even talked about this in the messages going back and forth, you kind of said that you naturally fall back to your guard if, uh, if, you know, if you're in mount or some position and the person starts to come up. That's the first thing that you have to change if you want to be a good top player. You have to mentally think, I want to be a good top player. Watch a lot of wrestlers. Wrestlers have this thing where they will do everything they can not to go on their back, and they'll try to stay on top. Now you don't want to be that way because you want to be a well, uh, well-rounded, versatile jiu-jitsu practitioner. But you do want to have, if you want to get better at top game for a while, you do want to have that mindset of like, I've got to hold this position. I can't just give up on it. So that's number one mindset. Now let's take a look at the position. You were saying that you were trying to hold mount. I got my buddy Jack here, and Jack is a big fella, right? I'm not, I'm not a small person, but again, I'm not a, I'm not as big as Jack. And Jack, um, if I'm rolling with Jack, I'm not going to put myself in this position too often. And the reason being is when I'm in mount, first off, like my Jack's a big fella, he's barrel chest and everything else. My knees are barely on the mat. Okay, and again, if you're a smaller guy, this is gonna happen to you a lot. And also, Jack's now squared up with me. So if we think about like people pushing with their arms, lifting with their hips, all of that stuff is easier here, right? So like if Jack wanted to like push his hips up, boom, he'll lift me up, and then he can like literally, I mean just press me off. <laughs> Do a big one. <laughs> so, and um, you know, and maybe I can like, you know, get my weight down really low and stuff like that and make it difficult to do. Of course I can. And if you're really tall, sometimes it, it can be a better position. But in my experience and from the students that I've had over the years who have been smaller, it's a better idea to play like side control, knee on belly, and back mount. Let's talk about those positions real quick. In side control, you were saying that you were getting rolled a lot. I guarantee you what's happening is you're putting your weight to center. What I mean by this is, I used to have this all the time. I, had, I remember I had this one guy that used to train when I was a white belt, and he was like 260 pounds, he was a wrestler, and sometimes I could sweep him, but I remember I had to get really good at like not letting my weight go center of his chest because he would just chuck me over. So watch what happens. If I let my weight, my chest go center to his chest, if Jack just starts to roll a little bit, I'm gonna move, right? Now, if you couple that, even if I'm squeezing, if he starts to roll and lifts my hips up, put your, yeah, right on my hips, lift me up, he can push me up pretty easily. So what we wanna do, if the person's much, you wanna do this all the time, but especially if the person's larger, we wanna take our hip and we wanna drop down low, and I like to put a lot of pressure on the face here. Now, my toes are still active, so they're still dry, but now if Jack starts to roll, I don't move. It's very subtle, right? It's one of those micro details or micro adjustments they talk about on the internet, right? So we're gonna take our weight from the center and we're just gonna like slide it down just to where you're like on the side of the ribs, okay? So if you're holding side control, I think that'll help out. And again, put a lot of pressure on your shoulder right here, kind of leaning to the face here so you can really drive into them. That's always been helpful to me. Another good position, especially when you get with a big person who's like pushing you and everything else, is knee on belly. So if Jack, like Chuck, I was just using this on you. Yeah. Uh, so if I push, if he pushes me up, and I go knee on belly right here, okay? First off, I'm now out of range of his push, right? I can put pressure on him, and like if he starts to try to turn towards me, we can start to step over and move around. You've got to think about this. As a smaller person, you're going to lack the strength, right? But you'll probably have a little bit more speed than the person that you're, you're working with. So you can start to basically work around them. I have a good friend of mine, Dave, who he, had, he used to have a great knee on belly. He was about 155, 160 pounds, you know, soaking wet. And he would just go back and forth and knee on belly people. And he would wear down these really big guys. And over time, again, then the submissions become easy because they become fatigued. 
And then again, back mount, I, I think I don't have to explain it to you. I think back mount's a great position because you know, no matter how big and strong you get, you can't build enough muscle for me to, if I get my arm under your neck, I'm gonna choke you, right? You can't stop me from doing that. And so again, I would say just an idea to chew on for you here, brother, is when you're going to the gym next time, take the tips that I talked about, about mindset, mi mindset, mindset, dropping your hips and side control, using knee on belly, going back and forth and staying mobile, right, rather than trying to attach yourself. Also, be ready to post that on the hand if you ever need to. If they're gonna roll, you gotta be ready to post that on your hands. And then, again, um, maybe back mount, but stay away from mount for a while and see how that works for you. Because again, in my experience and watching my smaller students, even the guy that's holding the camera, he's about 150 pounds or whatever, and I was saying like, the, the, the question today is from a guy who's smaller who's trying to hold mount on big people, and he kind of just shook his head. Again, it's not that you can't do it, but again, it's probably just not gonna be the ideal situation for you. And as a jiu-jitsu practitioner, you have this wide array of techniques at your disposal, and what you're trying to figure out is, it's, it's a problem solving thing, right? So you have a particular problem with this one thing and this one person and the way that they're using their particular attributes or techniques. And now you're trying to find a way to use your techniques and figure out which ones are gonna work. And your techniques are nothing more than tools. And sometimes you're gonna need different tools for different uh, jobs, right? So you're gonna need different positions, different techniques for different opponents as, you, uh, as you're rolling. And so again, that's just an idea uh, for you for that pos position, that uh, issue that you're having with top position. I'm finished. So Adam's not here. And we don't know what to do. We don't know how to end the video because normally I say Adam and he does this. And, um, but uh, thanks for your time, Jack.